we're going to multiply 15 and 4 tenths times 7 and 3 tenths. And because the fifth grade standard asks that students be able to multiply decimals using the standard algorithm and be able to relate that to models or drawings, we're going to use the area model um, as our explanation and as our model for this one. So we'll first start with the area model and then we'll do the algorithm. So the area model, when you're using an area model, you're going to draw a rectangle. And I'm going to put the first factor along the top of my rectangle, that's 15 and 4 tenths. Because there are three digits in 15 and 4 tenths, I am going to draw three columns. And I will write 15 and 4 tenths in expanded form along the top. So 15 and 4 tenths becomes 10 plus 5 plus 4 tenths. Now I'm going to write the 7 and 3 tenths along the other side of my rectangle, and because there are two digits in 7 and 3 tenths, I'll have two rows. Now this time I'm actually going to write it 3 tenths plus 7. I could have written 7 plus 3 tenths. Um, 7 plus 3 tenths and 3 tenths plus 7 are the same, but because I want it, um, my area model to reflect what we're doing with the algorithm, I'll make it 3 tenths plus 7. Um, let's go ahead and we'll do some multiplication here. Um, we'll start with 10 times 3 tenths. Well, in some ways I could look at that as um, a repeated addition. I have 10 copies or 10 groups of 3 tenths, and if I add those together or multiply, depends how you want to look at it, I will have the number 3. 5 times 3 tenths, again, I could look at that as 5 groups of 3 tenths, and that would give me 1 and 5 tenths. Now, 4 tenths times 3 tenths, this time I want to look at it a little differently. I'm going to look at it as 4 times 3 is 12. And since it's tenths, 4 tenths times 3 tenths, the 4 times 3 is 12, tenths times tenths is hundredths, and so I have 12 hundredths. So I know where to place my decimal. Let's go ahead on to the 7. seven oh, actually, let's go back and let's add those numbers together first. So We'll get our first partial product by adding 3 plus 1 and 5 tenths and 12 hundredths. And when we add those together, we get 4 and 62 hundredths. I could rewrite them all vertically, make sure I line up my them by place value and drop down my decimal and I would get 4 and 62 hundredths. All right, let's go ahead and multiply by the um, 7. 7 times 10 is 70. 7 times 5 is 35. 7 times 4. This time, let's go ahead and that's, um, we'll look at both ways. It, that's either 7 groups of 4 tenths or I could say that 7 ones times 4 tenths, 7 times 4 is 28, but that's ones times tenths when I look at the units, and that gives me tenths, so that would be 2 and 8 tenths. Let's go ahead and add these together. 70 plus 35 plus 2 and 8 tenths. When we add those together, we get 107 and 8 tenths. That's another partial product. Add our two partial products together. 4 and 62 hundredths plus, actually let's let me move my plus sign over a little bit here, I'll just do it in yellow, plus 107 and 8 tenths. I want to make sure that I line them up by place value. I'll even put another zero placeholder there. And let's add them together, 2 plus 0 is 2, 6 plus 8 is 14, regroup the 1, 4 plus 7 plus 1 is 12, regroup the 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, and 1. And then we just drop our decimal down. We will get, when we multiply 15 and 4 tenths times 7 and 3 tenths, we have 112 and 42 hundredths. Now let's go ahead and look at this with the algorithm. Um, we'll write our first factor, 15 and 4 tenths, and we will multiply that by our 7 and 3 tenths. Now when we're writing the algorithm, we actually want to just write it as if we take the decimals away and write it the, the numbers, the factors, as if we were just doing any multi-digit multiplication problem. 
All right, so let's go ahead and let's um, multiply. We'll multiply first by the three. Three times four is 12. Regroup the one. Three times five is 15 plus one is 16. And three times one, oh, let's regroup the one. And three times one is three plus one more is four. Notice that we have four, six, two, and we go up here to our first partial product, 462. Of course, we already have a decimal when we were using the area model, but um, when we're using the algorithm, we're not going to put the decimal in until the very end. Let's go ahead and multiply by the 7. 7 times 4 is 28. Write down the, the 8, and um, we're going to regroup the 2. We'll put a 0 placeholder in the 1's place. Uh, remember, we're kind of multiplying as if there's no decimals there, just multi-digit multiplication. 7 times 5 is 35, plus 2 is 37. Regroup the 3. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 3 is 10. And we will add these together. When we add the together, 2 plus 0 is 2. We, are, we should get the same number that we just got when we did the area model. 6 plus 8 is 14. Regroup the 1. 4 plus 7 plus 1 is 12. Regroup the 1. 1 plus 0 is 1. And we have another 1. But now we have to decide where are we going to put the decimal. So there's a trick, basically. When you're using the algorithm, you can actually use a trick. But the area model shows us that the trick works. So our trick is basically, let's look at how many decimal places are in our two factors, and that's how many decimal places have to be in our final product. So 15 and 4 tenths, we have one decimal place. I'll put one in parentheses. 7 and 3 tenths, we have one decimal place. That's just one place to the right of the decimal. So now we have a total of two decimal places. So in our final product, we need two decimal places. So we can start at the right and move to the left so that we have two decimal places in our final product. And that actually is what we showed when we used our algorithm. Um, with our area model. Now, I mean, if I had wanted to, I could have looked at this and rewritten this as 150, 154 tenths times 73 tenths. That's 154, which is what we did, times 73, and then multiply tenths times tenths, which are hundredths. We get our two decimal places um, again. So whether or not we're using uniform, whether we're using an area model, um, the algorithm's kind of a trick. Just count up your decimal places in your two factors, and that's how many decimal places should be in your final product.